unprecedented effort to broker a peace agreement between rival drunk cartels and the Mexican government is being led by a Mexican politician, who claims he's playing the role of an intermediary between the two parties. This comes amid an increase in drug-related violence. It's become abundantly clear that the Mexican government is unable to prevent criminal organizations from wreaking havoc in some of the country's largest cities, as evidenced by the onslaught of attacks that the drug cartel militias have launched against multiple cities in Mexico over the past four days. So, in today's video, we'll be discussing two cartels that told Mexico they'll agree to ceasefire amid the ongoing criminal activities being carried out in Mexico. On August 9th, Mexican authorities apparently disrupted a meeting between many major leaders of subgroups of the hyper-violent Jalisco New Generacion Cartel, also known as the CJNG. As a result, the western states of Jalisco and Guanajuato were under siege for around 10 hours. Numerous automobiles and buses were set ablaze within the cities of Guadalajara, Irapuato, Celaya, and León in order to block up traffic arteries. Additionally, it's believed that 25 convenience stores were also set on fire during this incident. One of the most important leaders of the CJNG in western Mexico, Ricardo Ruiz, is also known by his aliases as RR and Doble R, and was rumored to have been taken into custody the day after the events took place. However, on Thursday, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador refuted claims that an arrest has been made in response to questions posed by reporters attending a news conference he held in the morning. He stated that 16 people were arrested during the attacks, but he didn't provide any information regarding the identities of those arrested. But they are supposed to be significant people because that's why there was such a big reaction, he claimed. The president did not clarify who would have been arrested, which led to a speculation in the media that perhaps Doble R was arrested and then released by authorities as a way to appease the assailants attacking the cities. The president didn't clarify who would have been arrested, which caused a lot of response by the CJNG. During Lopez Obrador's presidency, a similar policy of catch and release was implemented in response to threats posted by cartels. This policy is not unprecedented. In the month of October of 2019, Mexican authorities in the city of Culiacan appeared to have captured Ovidio Guzman, who is the son of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the commander of the Sinaloa cartel, who is currently in prison. Associates of the Sinaloa cartel laid siege to the city in an effort to exert pressure on the government to free Ovidio Guzman. Ultimately, the government capitulated, which allowed the younger Guzman to flee the country. The aftermath of the incident with Ovidio Guzman appears to have established a framework for cartels to deal with the president. The president came into office with a policy of abrazos, no balazos, hugs, not bullets, which aimed to reduce violence throughout the country. This framework appears to have set a framework for cartels to deal with the president. It would appear that criminal groups are becoming increasingly aware that by sowing disorder in the public sphere, they may influence the response of security personnel. The denial of the seizure of RR by López Obrador occurred just a few hours before identical attacks were carried out in another significant city in Mexico. On Thursday, a number of male inmates entered the main prison of the city of Ciudad Juarez, which is located on the border. They pretended to be the inmates visiting family while they murdered three other prisoners. Following the event, chaos reigned over the area around Juarez, which is only a few miles away from El Paso, Texas. There were multiple firefights going on at different locations all throughout the city. At least 10 individuals were killed as a result of the attacks, one of which was a pregnant lady who was killed when she was set on fire while she was inside of a convenience shop. The attacks also took the lives of four people who worked at a local radio station. At least one radio station and four convenience stores were claimed to have been set on fire by the authorities. According to the local authorities, the fight took place between individuals who are suspected of belonging to a group of the Sinaloa cartel, known as Mexicals, and individuals who work for a competing cartel known as La Lania. During his news conference on Friday morning, López Obrador addressed the most recent wave of violence that's occurred in Juarez. He expressed his dismay at the fact that the innocent civilian population was targeted in reprisal. It was hardly a fight between the two factions. Rather, they opened fire on innocent bystanders. The president didn't elaborate on his plans to put an end to the ongoing violence in the country. During a time when López Obrador was speaking, the majority of stores and schools stayed closed. And citizens who were afraid hid inside of their homes. Last week, during a Senate security meeting, Manuel Espino Barrientos, a federal congressman from the ruling party Morena, 
stated that reaching a peace deal between the Mexican government and drug cartels could be Mexico's only option to stop the violence in this country. Manuel Espino Barrientos said this during the meeting. He was discussing the likelihood that Mexico is Mexico's sole choice to put an end to the bloodshed when he made the statement. I sent along a proposal to the Interior Secretary to achieve a pact with some of the organized crime groups in Mexico, and I reached out to them as well," Espino stated. It was a proposal to make a pact with some of the organized criminal groups in Mexico. Only two of them reached out to me and said, If this is truly occurring, we're in, the narrator stated. Espino didn't collaborate on which cartels he attempted to negotiate with or whether the two of them were willing to accept the plan. The representative stated that the current level of violence in Mexico is at its worst, and that there are only two options left, to keep things as they are, with the consequences that we know, or to initiate a dialogue with these criminal groups. The Mexican government wants to create a peace agreement between them and the drug cartels. Do you think that's gonna help solve Mexico's crime rates? Tell us what you think in the comment section below. I will not give any additional information because doing so could put negotiations at risk. But situations like these typically end up being resolved successfully. It happened to me in Ciudad Juarez, El Salvador, and also in Colombia, he claimed. I saw it with my own eyes. Espino outlined his strategy, which would be implemented if the government were to give its blessing to the proposal. We would provide the criminal organizations guarantees for them to integrate into the legitimate economy, and in exchange, they'll stop working on all of the illicit activities. During his regular morning press conference on Friday, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador vehemently refuted the idea that a deal might be reached. There is not a single agreement or arrangement that we have with criminal organizations. According to López Obrador, we have our limits very clear. On one side, the authority, and on the other side, the criminals. It's an established strategy in Colombia where several governments have negotiated or tried to broker peace pacts with criminal organizations and guerrilla groups with mixed results. Espino's proposal would be the first official agreement of its kind in Mexico, but it's a strategy that has been used for quite some time in Colombia. Alejandro Hope, a political and security analyst, suggested that a peace discussion could be a solution to Mexico's persistent violence, but that Espino's idea was, at best, foolish. Espino's proposal was criticized for being naive. Hope told Vice World News that if you're going to have peace talks or negotiations between armed groups and the government, you need to make them part of the Constitution. You need to provide a legal proposal for it with an explicit policy on how you're going to do this. During the rule of the PRI political party, which governed Mexico for 70 years up until the year 2000, the rumor of a truce between narcos and officials prevailed. This led to many people believing that Mexico was less violent as a result of those unofficial agreements in which each criminal organization was allotted its own territory and stuck to it. PRI ruled Mexico from 1940 until 2000. But even it wasn't part of the deal. Hope explained that this was a complicit relationship in which the government officials and criminals shared the proceeds of illegal activities. Another challenge that one would confront in a negotiation of this nature would be determining who would take part in these discussions. Who are the members of the Sinaloa Cartel and the Jalisco Cartel, and who aren't they? Hope added. And that's about it for today. We really hope you enjoyed our video, and if you did, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, let us know in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next one.